Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem evaluate reverse Polish notation. Quite a mouthful, but basically this problem is about what the meaning of that term even means and it's just kind of a way to compute uh, arithmetic expressions and the only operations we're really going to be doing in this case are going to be the simple ones, add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Uh, one note that they tell us though is division between two integers should basically round towards zero. Uh, since I'm going to be doing this in Python though, if you you know take uh, some values and do integer division between them, they always round down, uh, which is not rounding towards zero necessarily because imagine if we had negative three divided by two, that's negative 1.5. It rounds down to negative two in Python, but that's not what we want to do. But uh, there's a trick in Python that you can do to make it round towards zero. So uh, we can take care of that. If you're using Java though, I think it automatically rounds towards zero. Same with like C++ in most languages. Uh, one thing we're told though, uh, in terms of the RN, RPN, uh, RPN expression, is that it's always going to be valid, which is good. So we don't really have to worry about too many edge cases. There's never going to be some uh, divide by zero or anything crazy like that. So now what does RPN even mean? Well, let's take a look at this example. So we're given a two, a one, uh, then a plus operator then a three, and then a multiply operator. Now the way uh, this is gonna work is we're gonna be reading from left to right. We're gonna be reading the inputs. Uh, so first one was a two. Next one is a one. When we reach an operator though, what exactly are we supposed to do? Well, any operator in this case is gonna be applied to the previous two values. And like I said, there's not gonna be edge cases, so we're guaranteed that there are gonna be two previous values. So in this case, what we would do is replace these, this two and this one uh, by adding them together. So we're, it's gonna be replaced with a three, right? So we can kind of forget these and we already used this plus operator so we can kind of cross it out as well. Now we have a three again. Uh, so I'm going to be kind of writing it down here just to kind of, you know, basically say that we've seen that three before. Now we have the multiply operator. Uh, it's going to be applied to the two previous uh, values. Now in the actual input itself, you can see that the, the previous value was a three and the value before that was a plus operator. When we say it's going to be applied to the two previous values, that's not what we mean. We don't want to apply it to another operator, right? We, we mean the two previous values that came. So you can see that we had a three and then the one before that was a one. But remember this two and this one, they were replaced by this three. And then we had a second three, uh, which we wrote down here. So this multiply is going to be applied to these two values. So we can multiply both of them and then replace them with the result, which in this case is going to be a nine. So you can see that that is our result and you can see that it is correct. If you know the data structure or you're familiar with the data structure, a stack, and you've used that in other problems before, I think this problem is pretty simple to figure out that a stack will be useful here because basically each operator is going to be applied to the previous values, right? But in the case of this two, the previous values are going to be removed from the stack right and then replaced with the new value which is a three so uh you know as we read through the input each value here is going to be added to the stack anytime we reach an operator the previous two values are going to be removed from the stack and then we're going to do the operation on them so in this case two plus one and then we're going to take the result of that which is three and then push it back onto the stack and that's kind of what I was uh, getting at when I was doing the drawing explanation. So really quickly, let's actually run through an example with a stack. And to, just to make this problem a bit more interesting, let's replace this uh, uh, plus operator with actually a subtract and this multiply with a divide because uh, it's gonna be a little bit different with these two operations because with plus, these two are gonna be added, right? Two plus one. But when you have subtract, which order are they gonna be subtracted? Well, the intuitive one would be two minus one because that's the order that they appear in but one minus two could be possible, right? Well, in this case, if you looked at the second example, I think they clarify that, yes, it's gonna be this way, right? Two minus one. Uh, let's run through this with a stack very quickly. So we read the first value, it's a two, we add it to our stack. Second value is a one, we add it to our stack. Next, we get the subtract operator. What does that mean? That means we pop these values from our stack and then do the operation. So in this case, it was two minus one that's gonna be a one over here. 
Next value is a three, we add it to the stack. Next, we have a divide operator. So in this case, it's gonna be the same order that the values appear in. So one divided by three, we're gonna to round towards zero. So in this case, it's actually gonna be zero, right? So we pop this, pop this, uh, and then replace it with a zero. And we're guaranteed, since this is always gonna be valid, that we're only gonna be left with a single value in our stack, so that's the value we're gonna return. So in this case, the answer is zero. So that's pretty much the entire solution. Now we can code it up, but I just wanna mention that the overall time complexity is gonna be big O of N because we're just reading through the input string, adding each value to the stack and removing it at most once each. So, you know, the time complexity is two times N. In other words, it's big O of N. Uh, the memory complexity, since we do have the stack, is also gonna be big O of N. So now let's code it up. Let's code it up. Like I said, we're gonna need a single data structure in this problem, which is gonna be our stack. In Python, you can just use a list. Uh, and then most of this problem is just going to be boilerplate. Once you realize that a stack works for this problem, then it's just about coding it up. So what we're going to do is just iterate through every character in our tokens input, and then just have a bunch of conditional statements. The first one is if the character, uh, well, there, there's five cases, remember, it could be one of the four operators, or it could be any other character. And any other character basically means that it's a digit or some number, right? So let's basically make those conditions. So first is that it's plus, and let me just kind of, you know, copy and paste this stuff and then get uh, it updated. So the cases are plus, minus, multiply, and divide. And then the last fifth case is where it's something else. And if it's something else, that means it's a number. And that's the simplest case of all, because that means we can just take that character and then append it to our stack. But it's a character, remember? But we should probably convert it into a number before we actually add it to our stack, because remember, what we want to return is a number, not a character. Okay, so now let's start with the plus condition. Well, remember what I said? We can just pop from our stack twice and then add those values together and then append that to the stack. So for this, it's actually pretty simple as well. We pop from the stack twice, take the return values, add them together, and then append that to the stack so that the result is added to the stack. Pretty simple. And for multiply, that's also gonna be almost the exact same thing, right? Instead of plus, we're gonna be doing multiplication. So let's you know just copy paste and then update that as well. It's gonna be a little bit more tricky though for subtract and divide because the order that we're popping it in is not the order that we wanna apply that subtract and uh, divide operation. So uh, for subtract, well, again, we are gonna pop twice because we wanna get those two values that were popped. So let's do that. This is, let's call them just A and B arbitrarily. You could call them anything that you want. Uh, but when we uh, subtract them, we want to subtract, we want to take the one that was popped second and subtract it from the one that was popped first. So B minus A, and then take that and then append it to our stack. So this though is gonna be very similar to what we do in our divide operation down here. Uh, we're gonna pop two values and then in that same order B and then A, we're gonna divide them rather than subtract them. But in Python, when you do this, this is actually decimal division, but we wanna round it towards zero. So to do that, we can actually just call the int function, which will convert it to an integer and also round it towards zero at the same time. So that's pretty much the entire code. You can see it's mostly just a bunch of boilerplate, uh, but once all of that's done, let's go ahead and return the single value that is guaranteed to be in the stack, stack at index zero, and then make sure that our code works by running it. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does, and it's very efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel, and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.